The fetal nervous system and immune systems develop slowly. However, the fetal endocrine system plays a vital role in the fetal growth and development and homeostasis. Fetal hormones perform the same functions as in the adult, but they also subserve unique processes such as sexual differentiation and initiation of labor. The fetal adrenal glands are unique in both structure and function. At month four of gestation, they are larger than the kidneys. The fetal zone, the fetal zone produces a large amount of dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate and provides androgenic precursors for the estrogen synthesis by the placenta. The definitive zone produces cortisol, if you remember, the adrenal cortex. The cortisol has many functions during the fetal life, including promotion of the pancreas, lung maturation, and the induction of the liver enzymes, the promotion of intestinal tract cyto differentiation. The adrenal medulla develops by about week 10 and is capable of producing epinephrine and norepinephrine. The rate of fetal growth increased significantly during the last three months of pregnancy. Surprisingly, growth hormone of maternal placenta or fetal origin has little effect on fetal growth as just by the normal weight, hypopituitary, dwarfs or anencephalic fetuses. Fetal insulin is the most important hormone in regulation fetal growth. Glucose is the main metabolic fuel for fetus. Fetal insulin produces by fetal insulin produced by the pancreas by week 12 of gestation. Regulates tissue glucose use, controls liver glycogen storage, and facilitates fat deposition. It does not control the supply of glucose. However, this is determined by maternal gluconeogenesis and placental glucose transport. The release of insulin in the fetus is relatively constant. During pregnancy, the uterus is inactive, cosent, under the effect of progesterone and relaxin. Weak and irregular uterine contractions occur throughout the last month of pregnancy. Eventually, a series of regular, rhythmic, and forceful contractions develop. These may last for several hours, day, or even longer, and eventually result in the expansion of the fetus, placenta, and membranes. Although not all of the factors leading to the initiation of labor are known, endocrine, paracrine, and mechanical stretching of the uterus all play a role. Once labor is initiated, it is sustained by a series of positive feedback mechanisms. This figure shows the endocrine regulation of parturition delivery. You see, when the delivery begins, ACTH hormone level increases from the fetal pituitary. It means that this hormone has all in the initiation of the delivery. When this hormone increases, it affects the fetal adrenal cortex. Fetal adrenal cortex 
produces this androgen dehydroepiandrosterone here, yeah, surface, and also cortisol, and you remember cortisol has many functions from this like maturation, liver glycogen, intestinal transport and digestion, closed ductus arterial arteriosus. And this hormone, the androgen, affects the placenta to increase the local estrogen producer ratio and also to increase local prostaglandins. In the mother, oxytocin also level increases and from the mother as well as from the fetus, catecholamines also they increase. All these they affect the uterine contraction so as the delivery to occur normal. Once the baby is born, it needs milk and the milk from the mother from the mother needs prolactin. Estradiol modulates prolactin release in two ways. First, estradiol increases the sensitivity of the lactotrope to stimulation by TRH. Second, estradiol decreases the sensitivity of the lactotropes to the inhibition by the dopamine. If the mother does not nurse her young, Prolactin levels generally fall to non-pregnant levels after one to two weeks. But if the mother does not does sorry, if the mother does breastfeed, increased prolactin secretion is maintained for as long as suckling continues. Suckling inhibits the ovarian cycle. Lactation generally inhibits cyclic ovulatory function. Suckling likely reduces the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone by neurons in the adrenal nucleus and preoptic area of the hypothalamus. However, if the mother continues to nurse her infant for a prolonged period, ovulatory cycle eventually resume. In breastfeeding Bangladesh women, the period of an ovulation averages 18 to 24 months. If the mother does not nurse her baby after delivery, ovulatory cycles resume on average 8 to 10 weeks after delivery with a range of up to 18 weeks, oxytocin and psychic stimuli initiate milk ejection. Infertility affects one of five women in the United States and also in the other world. Thorough understanding of female endocrinology, anatomy and physiology is critical to gaining insights into solving this major health problem. Several factors can cause infertility. Environmental factors, disorders of the central nervous system, hypothalamic diseases, pituitary disorders, and ovarian abnormalities can interfere with the follicular development and or ovulation. If a normal ovulation occurs, structural, pathological and or endocrine problems associated with the oviduct and or uterus can prevent fertilization, impede the transport or implantation of the embryo and ultimately interfere with the step establishment or maintenance of pregnancy. The most common cause of female sterility is failure to ovulate. These are the contraceptive use and efficacy rates in the United States. Methods, estimated use, 
an accidental pregnancy in one year. First method, pills, hormones. Let us just have an example of the pills, either combined, progesterone and estrogens, or progesterone only, or emergency pills, high dose of estrogens and progesterone, or depot, or implant. Almost the uh, pills, they prevent the ovulation. And for the emergency, inhibit implantation. You see, the pills are very effective. Above 95. Second method, female sterilization, tubal ligation. Estimated use 19.4 accident. Condom. May sterilization vasectomy, diaphragm, sperm barriers, spermicides, sperm killing chemicals, rhythm, we will talk about it, and intrauterine inter device, equipment inserted into the uterus to prevent the implantation. You see intrauterine device, an object placed into the or in the uterine cavity prevents implantation. But this is conditions. The woman uses this method. She should have at least one child. Otherwise she will be used to not to have children. Now we'll talk about the rhythm method, the timing. This is very important. Now we'll see the importance of this method or using this method. This is the duration of the ovarian cycle or uterine cycle. The regular or most of the women they have the cycle 28 days. You remember ovulation occurs at day 40 and we said that sperms and over two days. If the sexual intercourse occurs between the husband and wife before the ovulation the sperm can survive in the female reproductive system for two days and we give one day extra. And if the sexual intercourse occurs after ovulation, also the ovum can remain capable of accepting the sperms for two days and we give one day extra. It means that from 11 to, to 17 day of the 28th cycle, if the sexual intercourse between couples occurs, then pregnancy may occur. And then if the couple does not want to have children, they have to avoid this unsafe period. But if they want to have child, they have to stick to this unsafe period. Almost after ovulation, 14 days. Therefore, between the end of the cycle and ovulation, this duration does not change. And the day after 17, 17 to day 28, the pregnancy does not okay. This is called safe 
period. If any change occurs in this cycle, the change occurs before the ovulation. Therefore, between the menstrual phase and day 11, this is called possible shape. And then you see that the cycle, the, the regular ovarian cycle, we can divide it into menstrual phase, possible shape from 4 to 11, and safe period in which the pregnancy may occur, and the safe period between the 17th day of the cycle. You see, most women have this cycle of 28 days. Few women less than 28 days duration. Few women and 28 days. But the wide range from 21 to 35, up to 42 days have been recorded. And there are cycles, 36, 37, etc. But very, very few. If the cyclic duration of the ex woman does not change during her reproductive life, means this this is normal cycle in all of the above from 25 to 35. Usually, as we said, between the ovulation day and the end of the cycle, all 14 days. Therefore, we can determine the day of ovulation easily by using the following equation and say period to have or not to have pregnancy. And also we can know the other periods. This equation, x plus 14, equal 28 days. This is the duration of the regular cycle. X equal 28 minus 14. The ovulation day at the regular cycle, the 28. And then X equal 14. This is the ovulation day. 14, the days between O, between ovulation and the end of the cycle. 28 days, the duration of the cycle. Example 2, X plus 14, which is always the ovulation and the end of the cycle, equal 24. Now we'll see the ovulation day if the cycle in X woman 24 days. If an X equal 24 minus 14. If an X 10. If an ovulation day in this woman having the cycle 24 days, the ovulation day, day 10. Example 3. X plus 14 equal 30. Four. X equal 34 minus 14 is an ovulation day at day 20. In these examples, we can know the unsafe period, safe period, and the, the possible safe. For example, this is the ovulation day in this woman having the cycle 24 days. 10 plus minus 3, this is the unsafe period. After 13 safe period, before 7 possible safe. And here, the 20 ovulation day. 20 plus minus 3, 17 to 23. The unsafe. 
after 23, the safe, and before 17, the possible safe. Just to have an idea about the hormonal therapy for ladies and maintaining beauty. Hormonal therapy for ladies is necessary throughout all stages of life, especially after age of 50, specifically in these cases. First, for normal, to maintain the density of bones and stop osteoporosis. Second, to maintain beauty and prevent wrinkles. Three, for treatment of extreme facial and body hair. Four, for the low desire for sex compared to spouse. Five, for maintaining the size of breast and preventing atrophy, especially in the menopause. To, re to prevent urine incontinence and ladies, sorry, in ladies. Zymer and amnesia.